Hi, this is Kai. This is hopefully the last part of a series of videos that describes how to convert your C star to run in equatorial mode. Um, as you recall in part three, at this point, your tripod um, with the front leg is oriented toward north. If you're in North um, Hemisphere, um, I don't want to venture out if you're in South Hemisphere. Um, the, you have uh, attached your polar scope, which in my case is just a red dot finder, on the body of the, of the scope. And then is, if, if you look through the retinal, the red dot should be pointing near uh, your your uh, star corresponding to the to the tip of the ax uh, of the rotational axis. So for northern hemisphere, it will be Polaris or somewhere near it. South would be some similar points. <coughs> so uh, again, you can use the the two uh, the, the two sets of knobs on the equatorial wedge to adjust the wedge so that the that retina would point at exactly as close to polar as possible. Um, just a note that we, since we are uh, really just uh, taking pretty short exposure time anyway, from thir 10 seconds to probably a minute or two, if, you, if ZW allows it, I don't think you really need to have a very perfectly level tripod. Uh, that's really a misnomer. Um, the the polar alignment can actually in theory should be able to compensate for that, but just have a rough level on your on your tripod, but don't overdo it. You don't really need that. Uh, that again, that's the tripod where the base of the C star will be rest upon. Again, make sure this the tripod is the the, the legs are long enough so that the triangle that it forms on the ground is it's a. Uh, it's big enough so that it's uh, relatively stable. And if you really want, you can put some rock, a bag of rocks on the stem, on the base stem of the, of the tripod. So once you have that and you have your, uh, you have your, um, uh, your, your polar aligned, um, that's when you would uh, go ahead and, and, uh, manually slew to a part of the sky that you want to image. Now, because uh, ZWO is still thinking it's in, in, in Oz uh, azimuth mode, I, I don't think the sky atlas is gonna be your friend in the beginning. Um, so you should be relatively comfortable about finding the stars visually and to point it that way. Uh, what I would usually normally do is just find a bright star um, at this time, it's part Capella, later on, be like Vega, or something like that. That's a uh, relatively high, um, not directly, um, uh, not not Polaris for sure. Uh, something outside. Um, remember, there, there's a limitation with the software that you cannot really move past what you think is a horizon. So, until ZW fix that, you're, you're limited to the, the part of skies that you can point. Um, so once you have that point pointed, what I would do in this case is then um, go to the uh, star atlas and you actually tell the star atlas to sync to that star. Um, you're not going to tell it to go to that star, you tell it to sync. Essentially what that means is that you're telling the C star to orient itself, say, yeah, I am I'm already pointing at that star, and I'm telling you how to, uh, that you're at that star, so just trust me. So once it does that, then, then it, it will do its thing. Now, here's the secret sauce. The, the reason equatorial um, mode in CSTAR was, not, uh, um, was uh, almost, in fact, impossible to do until this very last uh, software and firmware update 
data in December of 2023. Uh, this is around um, um, just a few days after Christmas now. Um, this new f uh, software firmware enable a, a new feature called uh, horizontal calibration. What this means, what it does is that instead of depending on the level to tell CSTAR that I'm level on the ground, it's actually um, scanning the, the sky to, uh, to help it create a model of the sky. So with that, you no longer need the, uh, the level. And in fact, your, your seats are no, no longer need to be level to the ground. That's one of the reasons why I created a, a video that actually described this whole horizontal calibration process. As you can see, all these things kind of, uh, kind of, kind of play together so that we can get equatorial mode running on C star. So before you move, you, I would suggest now you stop this video and pause it. Then you actually go ahead and watch that video. It will describe in full detail how you actually can, can do a valid horizontal calibration. Now that is a, is, a, is, a, is a nightmare in itself if you don't know what's going on. That's one of the reasons why I created that video to kind of walk you through exactly what's going on and how do you always, you can consistently get a good horizontal calibration. And that is a definite prerequisite before you can move on and continue with this equatorial um, uh, uh, conver uh, conversion. All right, so um, I'll stop here, go try it out, and now I'll continue after this. All right. So now I, I hope you've com um, you have uh, completed your horizontal calibration. And in fact, if you uh, follow through that, with that video, part of that step is actually to tell um, C-Star, uh, the star atlas, to sync your current position to a star. Um, that's that's exactly the same uh, step I just told you as part of that um, uh, part of the uh, uh, equatorial uh, step where you tell the star atlas in C star where you are to sync to a star. That means you have to manually sue to a star and you sync it. Do not tell it to go to because before you do that, uh, the, the, the uh, the 3D, the, the uh, Atlas model inside C star is all, it, it's not initialized until you've completed the horizontal calibration. Okay, so let's, re, uh, let's review now. So now your, your, your C star is on, on equatorial wedge. The arm is pointing to a region of sky you want to image, or maybe just a star that is relatively open and bright and a, a, a good swath of open sky. Again, that's part of the requirement for horizontal calibration. Now, that's pretty much it. Why is that? Because now the, um, the, in the whole CSAR's uh, software now can, uh, can be taught or be told where to go and start uh, imaging. You think it's in alt Osmuth mode, but in reality, you're actually running in equatorial mode. So if you want to uh, image uh, Horsehead Nebula or uh, Orion or any cool things you'd like, you'd like to do, now you can do it. That's it. That's pretty much it. Um, so um, I hope 
this series of videos would have helped you how to understand how CSAR works and um, also how to use it in this crazy equatorial mode that, that we astrophotography um, buff really likes. And this is really the only way to image quality stellar images uh, without all these, uh, all these uh, field rotations and limitation in, in exposure time because of the trailing stars. Uh, good luck. Um, have fun with C-Star. <laughs>